Good morning and welcome to you all to this service of morning prayer on Sunday the 21st of June, which is the second Sunday after Trinity. It's lovely to have your company with me this morning as we live stream from, or as I live stream from church today. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Benedicity. Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you heavens. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all peoples of the earth. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. O people of God, bless the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all you of upright spirit. Bless the Lord, you that are holy and humble in heart. Bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. So let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our appointed psalm for this morning is Psalm 49. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all you that dwell in the world, you of low or high degree, both rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will unfold my riddle with the lyre. Why should I fear in evil days? When the malice of my foes surrounds me, such as trust in their goods, and glory in the abundance of their riches. For no one can indeed ransom another, or pay to God the price of deliverance. To ransom a soul is too costly. There is no price one could pay for it, so that they might live forever and never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also, with the foolish and ignorant they perish, and leave their riches to others. Their tomb is their home forever their dwelling through all generations. There they call their lands after their own names. Those who have honour but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. Such is the way of those who boast in themselves. The end of those who delight in their own words. Like a flock of sheep they are destined to die. Death is their shepherd. They go down straight to the pit. Their beauty shall waste away. And the land of the dead shall be their dwelling. But God shall ransom my soul. From the grasp of death will he take me. Be not afraid if some grow rich. And the glory of their house increases. For they will carry nothing away when they die, nor will their glory follow after them. Though they count themselves happy while they live, and praise you for your success, they shall enter the company of their ancestors, who will never more see the light. Those who have honour but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Save us from envy, God our Redeemer, 
and deliver us from the chains of wealth, the ransomed through your Son, we may inherit the crown of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verses 1 to 15. You shall love the Lord your God, therefore, and keep his charge, his decrees, his ordinances, and his commandments always. Remember today that it was not your children who have not seen, not, who have not known or seen the discipline of the Lord your God, but it is you who must acknowledge his greatness, his mighty hand and his outstretched arm, his signs and deeds that he did in Egypt to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and to all his land, what he did to the Egyptian army, to their horses and chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea flow over them as they pursued you, so that the Lord has destroyed them to this day, what he did to you in the wilderness until you came to this place, and what he did to Dathan and Abram, sons of Eliab, son of Reuben, how in the midst of all Israel the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, along with their households, their tents, and every living being in their company. For it is your own eyes that have seen every great deed that the Lord did. Keep then his in this entire commandment that I am commanding you today, so that you may have strength to go in and occupy the land that you are crossing over to occupy, and so that you may live long in the land that the Lord swore to your ancestors and gave them and to their descendants a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land that you are about to enter to occupy is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where you sow your seed and irrigate by foot like a vegetable garden. For the land that you are crossing over to occupy is a land of hills and valleys, watered by rain from the sky, a land that the Lord your God looks after. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. If you will only heed his very commandment that I am commanding you today, loving the Lord your God and serving him with all your heart and with all your soul, then he will give the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the later rain, and you will gather it in your grain your wine and your oil, and he will give grass in your fields for your livestock, and you will eat your fill. Here ends our first reading. A Song of David Splendour and majesty are yours, O God. You are exalted as head over all. Blessed are you, God of Israel, for ever and ever. For yours is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Riches and honour come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might. Yours it is to give power and strength to all. And now we give you thanks, O God, and praise your glorious name. For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Splendour and majesty are yours, O God. You are exalted as head over all. The second reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27, verses 1 to 12. When it was decided that we were to, set, we were to sail for Italy, they transferred Paul and some other prisoners to the centurion of the Augustan cohort, named Junius. Embarking on a ship of Adramitum, 
that was about to set sail to the ports along the coast of Asia, we put to sea, accompanied by Astacus, a Macedonius from Thessalonica. The next day we put in at Sidon, and Julius treated Paul kindly and allowed him to go to his friends to be cared for. Putting out to sea from there, we sailed under the lee of Cyprus because the winds were against us. After we had sailed across the sea, that is, off Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra in Lycia. There the centurion found an Alexandrian ship bound for Italy and put us on board. We sailed slowly for a number of days and arrived with difficulty off Sydney. As the wind was against us, we sailed under the lee of Crete off Salome, Salmone. Sailing past it with difficulty, we came to a place called Fair Havens near the city of Lycia. Since much time had been lost and sailing was now dangerous, because even the fast had already gone by, Paul advised them, saying, Sirs, I can see that the voyage will be with danger and much heavy loss, not only of the cargo but, and the ship, but also of our lives. For the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than to what Paul said. Since the harbour was not suitable for spending the winter, the majority was in favour of putting to sea from there, on the chance that somehow they could reach Phoenix, where they could spend the winter. It was a harbour of Crete, facing southwest and northwest. Here ends our second reading. The Benedictus. You have raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of your servant David. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. <coughs> Excuse me. To give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of your servant David. So let us pray. On this day, as we have this opportunity to gather together in prayer this morning, to hear the words of Scripture and to make our prayers to our Heavenly Father. So we remember that today is Father's Day. We pray for all fathers and those who have fulfilled that role for others in their lives, for those who care for them. We give thanks for those who have been such an inspiration in our lives and have guided us as part of our family. We give thanks for our families and friends, praying especially for those today that we miss, those that we are unable to visit with and spend time with on this special day. In our prayer intentions, we pray for our community, for the different communities that we represent as we gather today across our county and our country. We pray that our communities will be places of trust and friendship, 
where there is an openness to hear the gospel. We pray for all those who've made contact with church for the first time, or those who have reconnected with church through our online services. We thank you, Lord, that even though our buildings may have been closed, the church has still been active and been a presence within our communities, as so many of our faith groups have. We pray for the work that people have been doing in collecting food for the food banks and food larders, for the rhythm of prayer that has been maintained in and amongst our communities. We pray for those who have joined us online, who've become part of our online community here at church. And we look forward to the day when we can join together for public worship once again, when we can come together physically. We pray, Lord, for your wisdom in the preparations for that and for help with guidance in what we should do to keep people safe when they return to our buildings. Help us, Lord, to remember that the church is not made of bricks and mortar, but of your people making up the body of Christ here on earth. And so we pray for your church across the world and for the work that it is doing in different places. As we pray for our world today, so we continue to pray for your great gift of peace in the war-torn and troubled areas of our world. We pray for those areas where there is violence found today. We pray for those who've lost their lives in the attack in Reading yesterday and for those who feel fearful of going out onto their streets. Lord, we pray for those who try to help others, for those who volunteered within our communities, but also those who work across the world, bringing help and relief to those in need. We continue to pray for our key workers, for those who go out to work and those who work from home, for those who are preparing to return to work this week and for the anxieties and fears that they may have. We pray, Lord, that you would give them your peace at this time. We pray for those who have been furloughed and for those who have sadly lost their employment during this pandemic. We continue to pray especially for the NHS, for those people who have been on the front line in this fight, for those who have cared for those who have been ill, those who have sat with those as they have passed away. We pray for those who have been on the front line and those who've supported them behind the scenes, in our hospitals, hospice, our care homes, out in the community, in our GP surgeries and pharmacies, wherever they have found themselves in the care of others. And of the many that we bring to you now, Lord, in our hearts and minds, who are in need of that healing touch, so we pray for Bridget, John, Charlie, Wendy, Lisa, Morris, Margaret, and Joyce. Lord, be with them and those who care for them this day. We pray for those who have died. We pray for those who we remember at this time, for those whose anniversaries occur, and for those that we miss. We pray for those who have died this past night, for those who have been with them and those who have longed to be with them. Lord, we thank you that through the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus, we have the hope of resurrection, the knowledge of the gift of life, and can feel your comfort and compassion with us today. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for this service of morning prayer today. We have our worship at home service of the word service at 10 o'clock. Again, live streamed here on Facebook and then will be uploaded to our YouTube channel for those to be able to watch later. Or if you wish to watch it a second time, that's fine. Um, I hope you're able to join me for that service. Our service sheet has either been emailed to you or can be found on our website or on our Church Near You page. We have a service of evening prayer at 5 o'clock today as well. In the meantime, do stay safe, keep well, look after yourselves, and you remain as always in my prayer.